Welcome back to this week's technical. For those of you who are new to the channel, these technicals are meant to be short but helpful overviews of different topics related to farm animal health, welfare, and performance. In this week, we are finishing up the series on the different classes of wormers used in livestock. So we've done groups one, two, and three, also known as the whites, yellows, and clears. And now we are on group fours and group fives. So group fours, also known as orange wormers, also known as AD or amino acetonitrile derivatives. Currently available in the UK is really one active ingredient known as monopantol. And many of you will have seen that marketed under the brand name Zolvix. Group five is the purple, also known as SI or spiroindoles. And just like for group fours or the oranges, there's one product available in the UK. And in fact, at the time of writing, it's only available under a special import through your vet. That active ingredient is De Quantel, and it's available in a dual active with a clear wormer, abamectin, in a product marketed under the brand name StarTect. These groups are much newer than groups one to three. Monopantol or Zolvix was introduced to the UK in 2010. StarTect or De Quantel plus Abamectin was introduced in 2012. So really these groups have barely been around for a decade. Now, if you've watched the previous videos on groups one to three, you will have noticed one common theme and that is resistance is very common and probably far more common than many of us realize. This is where these group four and fives come in. Their novelty means we've used them much less, which means their parasites have been exposed to them much less, which means there has been much less pressure on selecting for resistance. So resistance is much, much, much rarer. In fact, there's been no group five resistance reported in the UK. And until very recently, there was no resistance reported to the group fours or the oranges. That did change in 2018 with the first report of resistance to Zolvix. And there have been a handful of instances since each of those farms had triple resistance to whites, yellows, and clears, and typically ended up relying exclusively on group fours, which is not where we want to end up. A perfect situation for fostering resistance. And that is a nice segue into how we might incorporate these group fours or group fives into a worming regime. They absolutely should not be used as groups one to three have been used. Equally, we shouldn't leave them on the shelf and wait for resistance to develop in groups one, two, and three on your farm before reaching for these products. That is because the biggest value of these products is in maintaining the efficacy of those earlier, older groups. To achieve this, there are two instances where we might carefully incorporate these products into a worming regime. Number one is a quarantine dose. Number two, is a late season break dose for lambs. Starting with a quarantine dose, we touched upon that in the sheep quarantine treatments video. By all means, go back and have a look at that video if you haven't watched it already. Remember, when you're buying a sheep, you're buying all the passengers that come with it. And that includes the population of worms in its gut. If that sheep comes from a farm which has resistant worms to groups one, two, and or three, those worms are going to hitch a ride onto your farm and you're going to be effectively buying in resistance. Since, as we discussed, resistance to group four and group fives are effectively zero, by dosing incoming sheep on arrival with a group four and or five, we should clear these resistant worms out. Incoming sheep should also be yarded for 24 to 48 hours to allow eggs from those resistant worms to pass. Hopefully you're quarantining them anyway for other reasons. The dung passed in those 24 to 48 hours should be composted, incinerated, or spread on land that's not going to be grazed by sheep. And in that way, we should be able to prevent resistant worms establishing themselves via a bought-in animal. Scops have a pretty up-to-date suggestion list for different quarantine treatments. I'll put the ones for worms up here. The link to all of that information will be in the video description. If you buy in sheep, whether that's one tuff a year, or a thousand store lambs, and you're not already incorporating some sort of quarantine treatment for worms. I highly recommend going and talking to your vet about it. Buying in resistant worms or resistant fluke or sheep scab is a great way to jeopardize a sheep enterprise. Second, the mid to late season break dose. So imagine many lambs in the UK will receive perhaps one, two, or three treatments of wormers over a summer, depending on the grazing history, depending on growth rates, depending on the weather. As the grazing season progresses, the number of worms within those lambs that develop a degree of resistance increases because those worms have been exposed to the product. There is a selection pressure for resistance. Using a group four or five late on in the season, often it's around or shortly after weaning, should in effect wipe the slate clean in terms of resistance to groups one to three. Unlike other worming treatments, it's recommended that every lamb in the group is treated, in contrast to say, 
targeted selective treatment. And you'll notice we're making the assumption that these lambs have had some worming over the summer. Some of you might be trying to reduce that through the use of faecal egg count, through monitoring growth rates, through using clean grazing, whether that's co-grazing with cattle or using new lays, and people are increasingly applying those principles. If those lambs hadn't had a dose of groups one to three, there hasn't been that selection pressure on resistance. And so they shouldn't need that group four or five break dose because there is no resistance to reset. Plus, and this goes for any worming treatment, remember to not dose and move. That is another perfect way of selecting for resistance. So for most, if not all sheep farms in the UK, there is a role for these newer groups to play. But critically, it is not business as usual. We cannot use these as we use groups one to three. Otherwise, we're going to go exactly the same way and we'll end up with big resistance issues as we have for those older groups. As ever, to learn more, go and talk to your vet about it. In the meantime, I'll put loads of links in the video description to further sources of information on this topic. So by all means, go and have a look at them as well. That's it for this one and for this series. Hopefully you enjoyed those. If you did and you're not already subscribed, don't be afraid to click that subscribe button, ring the little bell next to it, give the video a thumbs up and leave me a comment. Until next time.